All right, guys, welcome back to you, Valorant News, with many Ascension playoffs continuing. Big talks emerging over the last day or so as to where Ye might go come the off-season roster mania period that will follow all of the tournaments over the next couple of months. NRG Victor discusses the idea of Ye returning to that optic core now under NRG in some form or another. Would this be a good idea? Where would Ye potentially land, given the fact that he is statistically one of the best Valorant players that we have ever seen? Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. First of all, I thought this is kind of funny here for Ethan because we know that he's a prime Breeze hater but he's not exactly a massive fan of Icebox either. So I do wonder whether if one of these teammates was to return with a few tweaks, what direction they would go with it. I feel like Icebox maybe has more potential in general but um, yeah, I've never been a massive fan of Breeze. The way that bombsite is designed but yeah, I feel like these, these maps are out of the game for a good reason right now. They might get an update and we'll see them probably return at some point as we did with Split, but, you know, Split didn't really get that many changes, let's be honest, but it still and already was a pretty damn good map. Now, let's talk the Ascension tournament going down in the EMEA side. So, these have not concluded yet. These groups are still continuing. It's single round robin. They'll play all the other teams, so there's still things to be determined, but it looks like right now, Saw and Ascends and then Apex and Gentle Mates are the teams that will advance because only two teams get through to the playoffs that begin July the 13th. Now, Gentle Mates is actually a really interesting team, and I didn't quite realize this. French guys, of course, but um, Whalers appears here, and if you guys have followed Call of Duty as well, you'll know Whalers is like an OG Call of Duty professional who was in the league around the French scene for a long time and had some good success. I remember him saying, actually, when he kind of retired from CODs, that he was going to go and give Valorant a go, and I wasn't really aware that his team was actually looking pretty good. Now, okay, he doesn't have the craziest numbers in this series or anything, but that's not always what matters. Other guys on the team doing the same, but this is a pretty impressive result against a focus team that is far from a walkover. It was 13-7 on split. 13-9 the other way on binds and then 14-12 crazy overtime here on Lotus to get these guys over the line so that's looking very good for them to get through to the playoffs at which point they will be in with a shout of making it all the way up to the professional league. Ascends maybe still the favourites like Apex looking good as well so it's difficult to say what's going on over there but let's talk about the America's Ascension because big matches on this one last night not a massive surprise the way this ended in terms of the teams that won respective games and therefore the seeding going into the the bracket play itself. But the Union, everyone's least favourite team, right, for reasons that we discussed the other day, played up against Fusion, and it doesn't really feel like the Latin American region can put together a team that can consistently compete on this type of level. And, um, you know, even on the top level, it's pretty challenging for crew and such, and the Brazilian teams have kind of been dominating on that level. And then you've also even got on the Tier 2 level, the Latin American teams just don't seem to quite have it right. So, yeah, the Union win this series pretty comfortably the first one of the day. They take down Fusion to secure themselves the number one spot. Of course, they beat M80 in the first series they played. All the teams advance anyway, but uh, yeah, the Union, quick 2-0, 13-7, 13-6. Askiri is a very promising player, right? And this guy's had a lot of good moments on the jet and on the raise. So definitely an exciting player to watch. Unfortunately, there's some controversial characters here for reasons that we discussed the other day. And I do wonder, like, if the Union were to qualify and make it through, what would, like, Riot say about NTK and about Pank? Given their past of abuse and sexual harassment um, claims, respectively, I wonder if Riot would have anything to say about that if they were to qualify. Because you'd think that they probably should, especially given the situation with Sinatra and you know maybe the union should just sign Sinatra and just go all out but um I mean yeah I guess that remains to be seen so regardless we then got the guard playing at 9z now this is an interesting matchup this is a crazy one by the way 2v5 for the guard here it looks certain that they're going to go down 7-5 in the half but for some reason 9z they just love getting to six rounds and once they've got six rounds they check out you know we're done for the day at that point so Ned with only 66 HP finds himself in this corner and um it already is a 2v3 at this point and he still manages to shut down a couple from behind they somehow win this round the guard which is a pretty big one all things considered actually to get them to 6-6 six, six. and then they dominated the second side and then game two was on the lotus see a lot of this map lately and i don't mind it to be honest to play and yeah what a play here from trent right just going for the stick and you know the 90 player can't get there in time to take him down awesome play from trent and that was pretty much enough to get them over the line and definitely the guard a team that has had more lan experience than m80 they look the strongest stronger force for now of the two North American teams. M80 were dominating mostly online. The guard are very good, but not quite at that level. But so far, definitely the guard looked the more comfortable of the two. And we've even got some trash talk coming in, right? Net said even before the series, I'm going to smoke these guys. And then it was like, yeah, I smoked him. I want to make this clear about my smack 
talk. I have lots of respect for all my opponents, and I hope nobody takes it the wrong way. Banter is banter. Everyone worked their hardest to be here, but um, it's a lot of fun, and I'm not going to stop. So good result from the guard guys. And as I say, pretty comfortable, right? 13-6. Again, they get six rounds first side, get blown out second side. And then the same story. They get six rounds on Lotus, and they get blown out on the second side. I'm not really sure what it is about that. But um, yeah, again, the Latin American teams not quite delivering on the same level that many of the Brazilian teams have. And that advances the guard as the number one seed from that group. So only two teams failed to lose them out. That was the Union and the guard, respectively. MA to get the second place here in Group A, and Double O Nation second place in Group B, and then Fusion 90. So that leaves the bracket looking like this. So the Union actually have a pretty good run because they play the winner of Double O Nation and Fusion. The way the bracket has worked out is very promising for the Union to get to the upper finals. Now, okay, even if they were to win the upper semis, get to the upper finals, they'd have to win that and then win the grand finals as well. So there's a long road ahead of all of these teams. But if M80 beat 9Z as you'd expect them to, we then get the guard M80 in a matchup, which would be really interesting and does seem very likely indeed. So that will be a real litmus test, I think, because probably the winner of the guard M80, if it is that, plays the union, which is then going to probably give us a real indication. So it's very exciting. I mean, this tournament must be super stressful for these guys as well, because like the, every match is massively important here, especially at this point. And it begins today. 9 p.m. my time, the first game, then at 12 a.m. right midnight my time for the second game. You guys can, you know, this is British summer time, so you guys can work out your time zones from there. But massive matches to come and pretty much a week left until we get the resolution of this. Also wanted to mention, though, some big talking points later on the roster mania period to come because as it stands teams can't really make changes right they're locked in heretics have found a way around it by you know they've got rid of zeke and they're bringing in like benji fishy or whatever like some sort of emergency substitute situation they're doing and it probably can be done but mostly the teams are set in stone even if they want to make moves they can't for now and it's going to be after champions where as it was last year all the teams make changes yay though is in a really interesting spot because after he was released by cloud nine he couldn't join any other tier one team there wasn't any tier one team really looking for a player in his role anyway. Most other teams had their player in that duelist position kind of set in stone. The artist, you know, for Cryo, for example, 100 Thieves, teams like that. But also, even if they wanted to make a change, they weren't even allowed to do so anyway. So people are wondering, where's Ye going to go in the offseason? And many are wondering, could he come back to NRG in some form or another? Yeah, people are saying Ye is going to be our sixth man. For real? Thank you. For real? Yeah, for what? For, uh, for what? Six what do you mean for what? For like, energy six man. Like, as if. For like, next year? I don't know. Don't well, we have a five month break after champs, so I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> Ten seconds left. Spike down, B. Last player standing. No time, no time! Wait! What? Nice. John, there's no time! Don't give a fuck, brother. Okay. You, had, you had no time either. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> 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 I do remember that, actually. <laughs> 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 so come back to NRG in the sense that he was on the Optic Core and they've now become NRG. Of course, played with Marv and Crashies and Victor and FNS when they were that phenomenal Optic Gaming team of last season that, for whatever reason, weren't accepted into franchising. They had to go their separate ways. Ye went to Cloud9. It was released for various reasons. Was it financial? Was it team related? Difficult to say, but whatever the case was, that team improved after they dropped Ye. He then went to go and join Disguised, DSG, and that tenure did not work out particularly well. Absolute disaster over there, was very frustrated with how things were going, didn't help his stock at all, but many still realise that Ye is still a player with a very high ceiling. When you put a player of his calibre on a team that's a complete shambles, it's not going to look good for anyone really. And okay, yes, Ye was missing shots in that situation, but a lot of the time he was being left out to dry pretty hard, I think, by that just disastrous team environment. So it's fun to see Ye play, but um, now he's going to be looking at a return to Tier 1. And I think that Ye's stock is still such that he will get a shot in Tier 1 one somewhere you would think but as it stands it's quite difficult to say I mean the tweet that Ye did at the time was uh, difficult to read for sure and he hasn't really tweeted anything since then the only thing he's done since this tweet actually was I think he retweeted something about aim labs which I imagine was you know some sort of contractual obligation yeah this is the last thing that he did was I mean he hasn't really said anything on Twitter for the last several weeks so I imagine he's just biding his time a little bit to see what the plan would be no teams can make changes now but NRG obviously they like this guy they're good success with this guy and if their team 
underperforms come the World Championship, could Ardis go and could NRG Yay be become a thing? Or would they go for both, right? Because the discussion there from Victor was, could Yay be the sixth man? Could they bring him in as like the additional guy? They probably could even sign him as that if they wanted to right now, potentially, for Ethos. Maybe they could find a way to make that work. Not like they would and not like they need to because their team is seemingly as it stands in a pretty good spot. But it is definitely one of the big questions as far as I'm concerned as to what this offseason looks like and Ye will be a massive name in those discussions that NRG might well have to look at, especially if they don't get the result they want come at Champions itself. Very much interested to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.